I'm Maggie and I'm going to talk about body mechanics for piano tuners. Body mechanics is how you hold your body in order to make your work efficient and avoid injury. If you are like me when you were a younger tuner, you didn't take this as seriously and now you're paying for it. So I hope this video is helpful to you. If you get something out of it, great. If not, do not discount trial and error. Try something, and if something I do does not work for you, try something else. Everyone is different. Everyone tunes a little differently. There are many ways to approach this. The number one thing to think about, I think, is awareness, self-awareness. It's a really good idea to video yourself and see what you're doing. I've done that and I've taken videos of myself and I saw something I was doing. I was like, no, don't do that. And it helped me because then I could fix the problem. I just wasn't aware of what I was doing. Most of what I'm going to talk about is common sense, but when we're tuning, we get so focused on what we're doing, we forget. We forget to uh, be careful. So the first thing, I'm going to start standing up. The first thing to think about is body leverage. Actually, I'm going to back up. Head weight. Your head is heavy, okay? If you lower your head, this is a lot of weight now that's suddenly on your neck. So before I talk about body leverage, my best visualization is a string coming out of the top of your head. Some of you have probably heard of this. So regardless of whether you're standing up or sitting down, pretend something is pulling your head upward. Okay. Sometimes this results in a straighter spine and sometimes it doesn't. A lot of people will try to visualize a, a straight spine, which can be good, but if you're leaning over for any reason, you don't necessarily want a straight spine. You want to angle. You want to stick your tushy out, angle your lower back, lift your head up, you're not going to have as straight of a spine down here. What you want that head up. Pull, pulling up is what you want to think about. So with leverage, you want to angle your body. You want your body weight behind your movement. Um, if you're standing up, you can spread your feet apart um, at different widths, whatever works for you. De and it depends on how tall the piano is. If I'm tuning a taller upright, I will... I won't, you know, I like to lean. You know, there's problems with that, but I'm a leaner. Um, there's problems with not leaning too, so you just have to find what works best for you. If I'm leaning on a very tall upright, I, my legs won't be this far apart, but this is a shorter pin. Um, you want to angle yourself. If you tune straight, you don't want to tune straight on. If you're tuning straight on, you don't have your body weight behind your movement. You're not using your larger muscles, you're using rotator muscles. You don't want to damage your rotator cuff. You also don't want tennis or golfer's elbow, which you can get if you're tuning this way. So you want less rotation this way and you want more of a, a straight movement to yourself, angle to the piano. So we're at an angle. If you're leaning on here, like I said, think of the string coming out of your head. Uh, now, if you have strong thighs, this will be easy. If you don't, you can build them up, but if it strains your hips, knees, or ankles, change it. Do something different. Uh, if, if you can't do that, you may want to sit. If I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about here. Let me talk about one more thing while I think of it. Um, regardless of where you put your elbow or how you tune, when you're tuning, not only do you want to think about the string coming out of the top of your head, you want to angle your hands back a little bit. I am a slow pull tuner mostly. Same like that. Um, you don't want to do this. Don't bend that wrist at 90 degrees this way. Avoid it. You know, if you have to sometimes, whatever, but avoid it. It will aggravate a potential carpal tunnel syndrome. You want to keep that hand more back. At the very worst, you want it straight. Don't angle it. 
you want it straight or back or you can get into trouble so if I am sitting I don't sit at a tall upright so I can't help you uh, oh if you're standing and you're shorter a shorter person you can't reach or if you can't reach a tall upright you just lean here same thing <coughs> If you're sitting, you still want to angle. Um, if you're tuning with your elbow, I'm going to stand again. If you're tuning with your elbow, even though you're leaning on this piano, your body weight is still, is still behind your movement. You want your whole body to be behind that movement. Otherwise, you're going to strain your arm or your wrist. If you're sitting and or standing and you're a, what I call a jerk tuner, ha! Your, your lower back is going to be better for it, and neck, really everything, your spine is going to be better for it. I don't tune that way, I don't like to. Um, I've seen people, so you, I'm shaking the hammer, I'm jerking it just a little bit. You can, you can learn to do that well. I don't, but I know people who do, they're very effective. I've seen people brace with their with their thumb <clears throat> I'm at risk right now for lifting my arm up my shoulder uh, had an injury and it can pop out of the socket pretty easily so this is a little dangerous if I'm leaning on this piano if you're tall you can lean here if you're medium height um, you can lean on this hammer rest rail do not put your elbow on the hammers if I see you put your elbow on the hammers I will have a conniption fit so if you want to see what that is, put your elbow on the hammers now. <laughs> so you want to put your elbow here and push the hammers forward. I have never broken a hammer. Do not move your elbow until you've pulled it away from the hammers. I know that's common sense, but it's, it's amazing what I've seen people do. You can move your arm to a point. Don't get crazy with it. Get it in a good spot. Here, don't. I can't even do it. Notice my wrist is either straight or bent back. Okay. Um, you. Some people um, can lean down lower. Here, that's fine. Just remember to stay angled. Straight out of the top of your head. Regardless of how you're tuning or especially if you're jerk tuning, it helps to lift your thigh up to the piano and have, uh, you'll have strong calves this way. But if, if you brace yourself against the piano, all of a sudden a ton of strain is taken off your lower back. Uh, so this is a good, a good, it's a habit for me. It's a good habit to get into. Before I talk about a spinet, I would like to recommend two things. The first is based on, a, on an experience I had recently where I injured my right shoulder a year ago and I had to tune for eight months left-handed. On verticals, it came very naturally. It, I tuned one piano and I had it. I strongly recommend everyone learn how to tune left-handed because if you get very tired, it can make quite a difference to, to use a completely different arm with tuning. It can give your wrist a break. Uh, I strongly recommend it, at least for pitch raises. I can fine-tune left-handed now, uh, but I had no choice. On grands, the technique left-handed is very different, and I never got it. I got a C levitan ha ha uh, lever so I could tune left-handed on grands. Also, with the wrist, I mentioned not bending the wrist. If you have trouble uh, doing that at night, it can lead to carpal tunnel issues elsewhere. If you have trouble reminding yourself to not do that when you're tuning, uh, grab one of these. I sleep with this. I, I rarely use it during the day, um, but and I even bent it a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be tight. All it has to do is keep your hand from, from bending forward. That's it. It can, it can help you remember to do that. So at night, though, you're sleeping. You can't control it. This, this keeps you from bending it. So 
If you have any wrist issues, get one of these. They're awesome. The thing I wanted to mention about with a spinet, uh, one thing you can get with a spinet is what I call a spinet hickey. If you lean, I like to lean here when I tune. This is how I tune. So same thing, everything's the same, but I'm leaning here. All right. And, and I will brace with my leg, take some weight off my back. See, I wasn't even thinking about it. I don't know what I just looked like. String out of the top of your head. It's hard to remember. Video yourself tuning. You might be surprised what you see. So the spinet hickey, I will put a, a piece of cloth or a, a hot pad under my elbow and it slides and you don't get the spinet hickey. The advantage to either of these things is you can also use something like this to put tools on if you want to set a screwdriver here so you don't scratch the piano. This is a better spot though. But this avoids the spinet hickey. It's very handy. Other than that, tuning a spinet is the same. It's just you can rest here. So I believe that is it. If you have any questions about how I tune spinets or verticals or anything else, let me know. If I've done anything that throws up a red flag to you that might be causing me trouble, let me know. If you have ideas that could help me, let me know. I'm all ears. So I hope this is helpful to you. Bye.